Hi, welcome back to um, the basic stress analysis with ANSYS tutorials. This is part five. Um, so you remember, remember in the last tutorial we did this model of a, a plate with a hole and um, we solved a final model and we found that we got exactly the same result as the that predicted by the analytical solution. Um, we used the full geometry in the last model and um, this isn't good practice and it's it's not quite efficient um, particularly later on where we're going to be dealing with very large models and if you're dealing with 3D um, you've got lots of other complexities involved it's good practice to always exploit symmetry where it exists so let's just redo this analysis here see if we get the same result and let's use symmetry okay so um, the first thing to do is to clear our mesh um, so let's go back to the preprocessor let's plot our elements Okay, so it's called modeling, or sorry, meshing, and uh, mesh tool. Um, here's our mesh tool, and let's just pick clear here to clear the mesh, and pick all. And it's warning us that it's actually deleted the coupled node set that we created before in order to apply the loads. And um, that's not surprising, because if the nodes are gone, then the, the, the set that couples those nodes together is also gone. Um, that's no problem, we'll, we'll replace that later on. So let's just plot areas, so we still have our area there. So rather than deleting that area, let's let's use this as an opportunity to learn something else and let's use um, some Boolean operations to divide this area. Okay, so if we go to modeling um, and operate and Booleans, and this we want to divide the area. Okay, so we've got several options for area. We can divide the area by another area, by a line, uh, by a work plane. So we could we could draw a line down the center of this area using by creating new key points and divide the area by that line. But let's use the work plane. Let's not um, make anything extra that we we don't need. Okay, so if we go up to the utility menu in the top and click on work plane and display work plane. Okay, so the work plane has appeared down here at the bottom um, uh, left hand corner um, at the global origin of the problem. So let's move it to where we need to move it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the left hand side of this um, plate and just be left with the right hand side. So we need to work the plane, move the work plane into the center of the plate. So again we go up to work plane and offset work plane to key points. So I happen to know that there is a key point um, at the, the top of the circle here. Um, so if I just go plot lines you can see I've got two different colored lines here, so I know there's a key point joining those. Um, so my box um, is saying offset yeah, work plane to key points, and it's saying pick the key point I want to move the work plane to. So let's move to that one there and go OK. So now our work plane is moved up there. So that's great. Uh, the only problem with that is that the work plane always cuts um, on the XY plane. So if I cut this um, on the XY plane, nothing is going to happen. So what I need to, ha to happen is I need my XY plane to be um, pointing out of the screen um, along this line here. Okay, so again I go back up to work plane and I want to go offset work plane by increments. And I get um, the mesh tool is still open there, let's get rid of that mesh tool. And I get this box here. So the first thing I want to do is change the degrees here to 90 and then I'm going to go um, plus y um, to rotate the work plane around the y axis. Okay, So I've done that and now you can see that the x axis is pointing up out of the screen, the y axis is pointing vertically um, up and the z axis is pointing horizontally. So if I now divide this area by the work plane it will cut along the xy plane which is now pointing out of the screen. So I can go OK and get rid of this um, menu and I'll go back here um, and let's just plot the area before we do this so we can see it happening. So there's the area back again. Now I go to um, Booleans divide um, area by work plane and I pick my area I go OK and now you can see a line has appeared down the middle here and that area is now divided into two areas. Just to confirm that I can go to plot controls numbering and let's turn area numbers on. So now you can see I have area 1 and area 2 and they have different colors. Um, it's always good practice at this point to put the work plane back where it was and to orientate it back as it was um, so that we don't get confused later on and particularly if we're going to do several of these operations. So the best way to do that is to go up to work plane and align work plane with global Cartesian. What that will do is it will move the work plane back to the global origin and also 
pointed back um, aligned with the global origin so the x will be back pointing the x direction and so on so um, if I just do a replot we'll see that that has happened so the work plane is back down here again and I don't need the work plane anymore so I'm now going to turn it off so work plane and turn off display work plane so now I have two areas here I don't need area 2 so I'm going to get rid of area 2 so I'm going to go up to modeling delete uh, area and below so there's two options there there's areas only and area and below if I picked area only it would delete the area and leave the lines and key points behind in this case I want to get rid of all of them so I'm going to just click area and below and go OK and now I'm just left with one area OK so let's just turn off that area number just to get stop that from confusing us um, so numbering and area numbers off OK so now again let's mesh this um, meshing mesh tool and um, let's just use the same mesh again for the time being um, area set so again we're going to use an edge length of one millimeter so all elements have a one millimeter edge length um, and then we need to go mesh okay and there's our mesh so it should be more or less similar to what we had before um, okay so this mesh isn't fantastic you can see that there's you know it's quite regular here and then we're getting a change going on here and this side is not the same as what's going on up there again I'm probably going to talk about that in the next tutorial for the time being I just want to, to explore um, using symmetry so let's just accept that mesh knowing that it probably isn't the best okay so now again our boundary conditions um, go to loads uh, define loads apply structural displacement on lines and now I need this line and this line and I want to hold those both in the X direction okay and then same as before I'm going to couple all the nodes on the right hand side and apply a, a load to them so I'm going to go to coupling couple degrees of freedom put a box around those nodes and go OK um, again I'm set reference number 99 you can call this whatever you want as long as you have X UX um, in this box here so it's important we're coupling them in the X direction not the Y direction we want them all to move the same in the X direction so you will see that a green arrows will come up linking them all up I can then apply a load to any one of those so apply uh, loads apply structural force on nodes let's pick any one of those nodes and again it's a thousand um, in the X direction and go OK um, okay so our load is applied our boundary condition is applied as before we still have the same problem that if I um, were to load this at the moment there's nothing to stop the model moving in the Y direction so it's good practice just to hold one node at the center of the model in the Y direction so let's just pick this one in here just looks like it's on the center line let's go OK um, wrong command sorry we apply displacement on nodes and again picking that center node and holding that in the Y direction okay so that's held in the Y direction there that will stop the model from moving about and we should be good to go let's just save our model go into the solution module solve current load step that all looks okay let's go okay and the solution is done let's go into the post processor plot results as always deform shape first and look at deform shape plus undeformed edge again that looks reasonable so it started off um, tall and not as wide and now it's much wider and it's less it's it's a little bit less taller um, and again our circle has moved from a circular shape into an oblong shape um, okay everything looks okay there so let's look at the contour plot and the X direction of stress okay and again my stress value is uh, 299 e to the 8 which is almost um, 0.3 e to the 8 which is pretty much 3 e to the 7 um, which was what our theory predicted let's just go back and take a quick look at that so again here's our theory from the, the last tutorial where we predicted that the stress due to the whole will be raised by um, a value of k is equal to 3 so it would be multiplied by 3 and should give us a value of 3 by 10 to the power 7 pascals and back in our finite element model we can see that we have um, 
a stress of um, 3, by our point, uh, 3 by 10 to the power of 7 pascals. OK. OK, so now let's, uh, let's take this um, uh, a little bit further and let's um, uh, model one quarter of the problem. OK, and so maybe we'll do that in uh, the next tutorial. So we leave this tutorial here. In the next step, we'll go and we'll model one quarter of the problem. We'll cut off this bottom half and see if we get the same result again. And then we can talk about how to properly mesh this problem as well. OK, so that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next part.